In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please take your seats. It struck me as we were hearing our three readings this morning that each one includes either the phrase or the idea of tears and death. In Isaiah, God will wipe away the tears from all faces. In Revelation, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. In John, we have Jesus beginning to weep. Death causes sadness. And it's one of the great privileges that we have as church to be part of that help and support that gets people through the loss of people that they love. Partly because we are surrounded by people who have gone before And partly because we have gone before ourselves in as far as we have helped people through the ceremonies that we offer to mark the death of loved ones. I remember once upon a time thinking that it would be a good idea to move some of the gravestones outside some of our churches and to have play areas there instead, especially in those villages where there aren't play areas, perhaps even a skate park as that might introduce an element of life and joy and love and youth into the immediate surrounds. And that thought came to me after somebody in a home group I was part of that was, I think, a Baptist home group. And uh, the lad of the house joined us on one occasion, and when he was told that I was from the other side, he said, why do you build your churches in cemeteries? (laughs) Being surrounded by gravestones can have its merits but also its uh, detractions. But we have been there. And I think it behoves us to recognise that death brings sadness, upset and brokenness for the person who is dying, but also for those who are left behind. And it is one of those things, arguably, that we as church can do, is to say to people, they have died, they have gone, but it will be okay. We will stand with you, we will walk with you as you are hurting, as you are broken, as you grieve. We will give you time and space to do that. We have buildings that people can sit in. We have churchyards, and for all their gravestones, they can be places of peace and uh, review, restoration and solace. We have words and poetry that we use in our liturgies and that are part of our tradition from the years gone by. However, we as church also have something that perhaps other people don't have, that despite the apparent finality of death, and the hurt and pain of experiencing it. We have, in our three readings also today, the suggestion, the idea, the hint, the confident proclamation of truth that God will swallow up death forever, that God will wipe away tears from all faces, that God will wipe every tear from their eyes, And in God, death will be no more. And as we turn to the Gospel of John, we have a story that perhaps helps us understand, as it's been personified in the person of Lazarus, that Mary and Martha, they might have thought they'd lost their brother, but in Jesus, he has been raised to life. Despite the difficulties of the practicalities and the physicality of his dying. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's perhaps the wrong time of the year to be remembering Jesus' resurrection. But that is at the heart and the core of our message, that God came to be among us, 
God died that we may be free. And God was restored to life that we might have life in all its fullness. There is a suggestion that all that is gone will be replaced in our second reading from Revelation. A new heaven and a new earth. And sometimes we hope for and long for a complete replacement of ourselves, our bodies, our circumstance and our situation. But in the Gospel reading, that which was dead was restored. Arguably, I prefer that approach in Scripture, and both themes run throughout the whole book. There are things about me that are dead that need to be brought to life. There are things about the Church of England, and I hesitate to say it possibly, but I give you the opportunity to think for yourselves whether there are things in your life that perhaps are dead and need to be restored to life. And if that is the case in your community, your country, your heart, hear the word of the Lord. Lazarus, come out. Amen.